Check the description for the following discount codes. A lot of you will have seen the video I put up a while ago now asking whether I should review the tactile transducer kit from slipangle.com. The overwhelming response was yes, Carl, please do. So I emailed them um, and uh, I said, any chance of getting one for review? And they said, yeah, we've seen your video asking if people want to see a review. We've seen everyone say yes. So yes, you can have a kit to review, Carl. So that's what I've got here today. What made this kit interesting was, first of all, it's a complete plug and play kit. So let's just put that down for a second. It means you get four tactile transducers. These are the 50 watt RMS Dayton branded ones. They're also branded, what well, looks like UMI, um, on these exact ones that I've got here. And they're gonna be, if you were to buy a kit now, I think they'll actually come with slip angle branding on, but they're to, to all intents and purposes, they're a Dayton uh, transducer is what you would know them as if you're familiar with transducers. And what a, tr a transducer is essentially a speaker without a cone, so there's a, a coil, you know, a magnet, and it will vibrate at a frequency that you provide from an amplifier using, you know, speaker wire, just like you would a speaker through the terminals there. Um, I'll keep a description of what tactile transducers do short because it's been covered, a lot of you will know what it is anyway. But essentially, you use software like SimHub to have, there's four of these, you have one would, would replicate each wheel of your car. And when you go over lumps and bumps in the road or curbs, uh, you'll get that physical thud and vibration just like you would in real life or as close to as you can. Um, you know, cattle grids and stuff in dirt rally, you'll get that all through the rig, each wheel independently of one another, just like you would in real life. You hit a pothole with a front left-hand wheel, your front left hand puck is going to give you a vibration, you know, as close to what you could get in real life. You can also use it for effects, things like engine vibration. So you could have all four of these, you know, just do a low engine vibration at idle. Um, this is all completely customizable and tunable in the Sim Hub software. That's quite a complicated piece of software, so I won't be doing like a tutorial on that, it would be too long in this video. Just know that you use SimHub, um, which is free, or you can donate as little as you want. You can give them like a fiver to unlock the full version. It's a great piece of software. So that's what tactile transducers do. These are way preferable to vibration motors that you find in that next level racing um, seat cushion, for example, because these can replicate actual frequencies, which is what sound and vibrations are. Um, and they can do it instantly, whereas vibration motors are literally like a motor that you would find in an Xbox controller that spins with an offset weight on the end to make it vibrate. So there is a spool up time, there is a slow down time, it's far from instant, and you can't specify a frequency of vibration or sound like you can with a transducer. So this, in my opinion, one on each corner is a great, starting point for tactile setup. You can have, say, just one under your seat, and that's definitely better than nothing. But in an ideal world, one replicating each wheel, which is your four points of contact with the ground in a real car, are ideal. And then if you want to add one under the seat, one under the pedals, you know, that work kind of mono, whereas these will all work, you know, individually, then you can do that as well. Now, this is my opinion. And what I prefer, and this is important because I had some mouthy person in the comments and he even emailed me telling me that I was wrong to have my own opinion and that you basically, you want these bolted to your seat underneath, at the back, at the sides, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that having them on the four corners representing the wheels is wrong. Well, there is no wrong. This is purely down to personal preference. I don't like having tactile transducers bolted to my seat. To me, that feels completely unnatural. Now, if you buy the U-Shake 6 tactile transducer kit from Sim Racing Studio, which is a cushion insert that has transducers in, that is exactly what that is. They're literally touching your skin, basically, you know, with cushioning in between. And yes, it's great, and it works well as a plug and play solution that has literally no bolting on, no wires to, you literally just set it on the seat. If you want that ease of use, it's fine. For me, who's had the option to try, I, I ran four tactile transducers just like these for years um, before I had my motion system. I prefer these where the wheels are, and that is my personal preference and my personal choice. So 
that mouthy person in the comments um, telling me that I'm, I'm wrong, you're just wrong, mate. You might prefer them bolted to your seat, that's absolutely fine. And for everyone else, if you like them there as well, that's also fine. I don't. I like mine put where the wheels would be, or as close to as, on my rig. Uh, and that's how I like my tactile feedback to work. I think the guy, the guy even told me I was rude if I don't reply to him in, in the email he sent me, or something along those lines. I can't remember when it was ages ago, but I just thought to myself, the irony of telling me I'm rude by, by telling me I have to reply to you and that you're right and I'm wrong, it's just, anyway, you get people like this in the comments, it's just the world in which we live where the internet is wide and people can write what they like. Also, other silly comments are people saying, Carl, you can DIY this kit for half the money. You definitely can DIY the kit for half the money, but the whole point of this kit is that it is plug and play. It's for people that don't want to DIY it. People that don't want to do the research and decide upon a transducer. People that don't want to spend the time deciding what amplifier to run or what sound card they need or what gauge wire they want or what fixtures and fittings they need and you know what audio cables you need to, to come out and and in this case what isolators you want to use everything can be diy definitely and and it can save you money 100 percent. but the reason i like this kit was first of all it comes as a plug and play package which makes it easier for people to just go right there's everything there i need i can bolt it on i don't need diy knowledge i literally just follow the instructions which in fact i'll show you in a second um, and it'll all be on and all be ready and all i've got to do is get familiar with sim hub software because some people perfectly fine with, with software you know using sim hub getting ahead around that but they might not have a clue how to spec an amplifier to run for 50 watt RMS transducers, they might not know anything about that, you know, or, or what sound card is required, how many channels do I need, do I need two, two, do I need four, do I need five, six, seven, eight, how many channels, you know, what wire should I use? The benefit of this kit is it's all there, it's all done for you, it's all been tried and tested and should all work, obviously I will test it today, that's what I'm going to be doing, but in theory it should all be good. Now, the other thing that caught my attention about this was that they've used or provided these little isolator feet, you might say. Now, someone said to me these are used um, in industry for big air conditioning units, things like that. Um, I have no clue, but might, might well be the case, and that's perfectly fine, because big air conditioning units are big and heavy, and our sim rigs are quite big and heavy with everything bolted to it, including ourselves. Now, the idea of this, um, just like it says on here, is it, it's an isolator. The idea is to stop the vibrations escaping the rig and going through your floor and the rest of your room, which is, of course, what happens from experience, having your rig just sat on the floor with tactile transducers attached to it. A lot of the vibration does find its way around the room and objects start rattling. So you can use rubber feet. Um, the rec horn transducers come with little rubbers that you can put under your rig, but a spring will definitely isolate more than just a dense piece of rubber because with all the weight on the dense piece of rubber it will be quite solid a fair bit of vibrations will get through with these we have rubber on the top and on the bottom and then there's a spring in there as well now there is three different colored springs two blue two brown i think that is i'm colorblind could be red i think it's brown and um and two gray ones could also be green I'm not sure <laughs> um, and looking at the instructions here, which I'll now pull up, the whole, the whole system can take up to 250 kilos, it says in the documentation. So if we look here, it shows you how to attach these isolators to the rig, where they go, how you use these other brackets that I'll show you in a second, and bolt it all together, and that's what it should look like attached in the end. Now, springs. Blue are the softest. Um, brown are medium and the grey are the firmest. And as it says here, you would only use the firmer ones if you found the other springs were bottoming out. So, and obviously the front of the rig is going to be where the least weight is. The rear is going to be where the most weight is because that's where our seat is and where we're going to be sat. So what you would do if it bottomed out with blue and brown is you'd lose the blue, move the brown to the front and put the grey in the rear. And that would obviously stop that happening. I'm a reasonably heavy guy, about 90 kilos. Um, and I'll be using the Acer Tech uh, Sim Sport 
their bigger wheelbase on there, which is quite a heavy lump, uh, along with the GT Amiga uh, Prime Light cockpit, which is also reasonably heavy, being decent quality. So I may well have to use the other springs, but we'll see. Anyway, here's the wiring diagram. Um, and this is super easy to understand. You literally just plug the wires in where you see them go on the diagram here. So there's really, you know, it's really, they've really kept it very simple and very easy to do here, which is exactly why this kit appealed to me because it makes life a lot easier for people than having to try and figure all this out. And then after in the physical install, you download SimHub um, and there's a small tutorial here on how to use SimHub. So, and, and in fact, the sound card installation in Windows. So everything is there for you. This is, this is your tuning screen here where you could tune exactly what's coming out of where. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's enough. Like I say, I won't go into a SimHub tutorial. It's there on the um, Slip Angle website for you to follow and get a basic setup up and running. I think there's profiles as well that you can download uh, for SimHub for this kit. So they've tried to make it as easy as possible. And I think they've done a reasonably good job. So anyway, the other thing you see in the instructions there were these brackets here, and these will of course bolt to your aluminium profile with a transducer on the top. And then I think the spring probably goes underneath like this. Transducer goes on the top. Yeah, it does, because the bolt holes line up like that. And so that's kind of perhaps that way or that way. I can't remember now. We'll see when I do it. Yeah, probably this way. Um, that's what you're going to have suspending your rig off the floor. And it's definitely going to isolate the vibrations. Now, someone in the comments of my other video also pointed out that even using springs, they are still going to transfer vibration at a certain frequency. Everything has a frequency at which it vibrates. And when you hit that frequency, it will vibrate and it will transfer it through into the floor in this case, or you know, whatever it might be in other applications. Now it may be that the frequencies we use in SimHub for these tactile transducers um, don't come anywhere near the frequency of this spring, in which case you won't get any losses. I don't know what the frequency of this spring would be. Um, I have no, no clue. I don't make it, I don't, no spec on it. But it may be that what we use you know, doesn't, doesn't get lost. And I'll soon know, because when I test this, either the room will be vibrating at certain frequencies or it won't. And of course, these frequencies are all tunable in SimHub. So even if you found something, that when you test it, you know, it vibrates through this and you feel the room or something in the room vibrating, you could just alter that frequency, even up and down a couple of hertz maybe, maybe five hertz. Um, and that might then no longer hit the frequency of the spring and you don't lose it. They're all things that can be tweaked in the software to get it to work as you want. So yeah, these are the transducers, Dayton 50 watt RMS ones. These are the isolators with the different springs in. This is your little amplifier that's gonna power these transducers because as I say, they're basically speakers without a, a cone, so they don't make any sound. They just vibrate. And then in this little box here is our USB sound card. That's oh, quite a nice finish on that. Haven't actually taken it out of its sleeve until now. Oh, you know, pretty nice looking stuff. This, this amplifier's got a nice weight to it. I, suck, <laughs> sucker audio, let's hope it doesn't suck. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it feels, the, the, like the build quality of it looks decent and it's got a good weight to it. There's no sharp edges. Oh, actually, the, I, hadn't, I hadn't spun the knobs yet. They've got a nice weight to them. I am a man that appreciates, hmm, that was gonna come out wrong. I was gonna say I'm a man that appreciates a good knob. I'm not a man that appreciates a good knob. I'm a man that appreciates a quality dial or rotary. And these have got some weight to them. So yeah, if you buy this kit, that's gonna be impressive. I've actually got a, what is it? A Technics mini disc player here. And that has really nice knobs on it. There's just a great smooth weight to them. Um, it's something you don't always get in technology these days because it's an easy way to cut corners. But these feel good. So I'm impressed with your knobs, slip angle. <laughs> um, what else do we get? Uh, there's actually a little aerial for this um, amplifier because I believe there's Bluetooth on it, which you wouldn't use in this application. But you know, this isn't this amp isn't designed specifically for this. It's an off-the-shelf item. Like everything 
is here. It's all off the shelf stuff. Um, and that's you know why I got those silly comments about people saying, oh, it's all just off the shelf stuff, Carl, you can DIY it. Yeah, you can, but they've done the research for you. They've put it all together for you. They've spec the cables you need to split your audio off. They've printed off instructions. They've given you all the parts you need, all the fixtures and fittings to get this installed are provided. The research, the hard work is done. You know, there's a reel of, um, of audio cable here. Now, I don't know whether these are cut to length. I'm gonna say they're not cut to length and that this is just a reel. So you would probably need to cut these to length yourself. I can't see any other ends. Um, so you would need a pair of snips unless they happen to include any, because they've included an Allen key in here, or a couple of Allen keys for doing up the, yeah, another Allen key, more nuts and bolts. You may need, let's just undo some of this. Yeah, I think you're gonna need a pair of snips just to cut this to length for each of your four tactile transducers, and then just to strip the ends off. Um, if you've not done that before, I'm going to say it could be a little tricky, and some people are going to go, what? Just cutting a bit of wire, Carl, that's not hard. It's not if you've done it before. But um, I remember, you know, when I was a kid, first stripping back wires and just go, oh, I've cut through it, oh, I've cut through it. The, 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 the balance between enough force to strip it and enough to snip through it is a fine balance. It's not hard, you know, and I'm sure there's plenty of cable here, so should you be a first time wire stripper, if you do mess it up a couple of times, because you're only trying to strip back like 10 mil on the ends, then you can just snip it off and it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it would have, been, uh, would have been nice if they were cut to length. Then I suppose everyone's rig, cockpit, may be slightly different length, slightly different shape and size, in which case if they were cut to length, you might find that they're perfect for one person's installation, but then someone else has got an extra six inches and all of a sudden the wires you provided weren't long enough. So in fact, it makes sense for it to be on a reel and you can cut them to length yourself. The only other thing that I've noticed, I've got a fine selection of power cables here with different plugs and stuff on the end, none of which are for the UK. So I'm gonna have to go rooting around my house and find a couple of power cables with just these sort of two pins on the end to power the amplifier. I guess that must just be just to power the amplifier. Yeah, because what else will I be powering? And the USB sound card presumably is a USB powered. Yes, it is. So yeah, I just need one of these. In fact, I know exactly where I've got one that will plug straight into this power supply here. Oh, anyone who's interested in this, it is uh, 100 to 240 volt input, so it works all around the world. 24 volt, four amp or 96 watts. Uh, and that's 96 watts of supply current that doesn't relate to the 50 watt RMS of each of these transducers. I'm assuming that will be a different, because otherwise you might think, oh, 96 watts, that's not enough coal because each of these transducers can pull up to 50 watts RMS, but it's, I believe, you know, that's an audio wattage. I'm not an expert in this field, so don't shoot me down if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, just like when I use a, uh, like a, a, an amplifier in a car, if I was to put a subwoofer in my car, um, you match the amplifier wattage to the wattage required of the speakers. So this little amp here, presumably, is 50 watts RMS a channel, or equivalent to, it doesn't actually say on it, but we'll assume it is, because it wouldn't work very well otherwise. This can actually say, interestingly, it can take a 12 to 24 volt input. I guess to get the most out of it, you go 24, which is why we're using 24 here. But yes, no UK power cable for me, so I will just go and grab one of those from downstairs. But I will now do the usual montage sped up of me installing this stuff all on the rig. Um, and what we shall see once it's all installed, do a little close up walk around, is my rig suspended off the floor. And I did speculate in that video before, I realize I'm waffling a lot at the start of this video, apologies. Um, it's just lots of fun stuff to talk about. That um, you know, it, it could give you a very basic form of motion. And what I, what I meant by that was the rig itself will just move around a little bit 
as we're steering and pressing our pedals. These transducers themselves are obviously not going to move the rig up and down because when we're talking vibrations, let's say 50 hertz is a nice low rumble, there's still 50 times a second that this is oscillating and it's only oscillating a tiny bit so you're not going to get you know the rig moving up and down on these springs like as you go over lumps and bumps uh, like you will with a motion system for example with my pt actuator setup but i was just curious whether it will feel as we're doing stuff you know we're just going to feel a little bit like we're we're moving um coupled with you know the the feedback should be quite a fun experience because I am a big fan of tactile feedback, as I've said many times. Um, and, uh, and as I also said earlier, my preference is one on each corner. Personal preference. You can do what you like. No need to shout about it in the comments. Anyway, let's get this all installed. Um, set up. I'll get, I've, got, I've got Sim Hug. Sim Hug. I've got Sim Hub already configured for four transducers because that's what I ran before already installed. So I can literally, uh, and mine were also 50 watt RMS ones, the Rekhorn ones. Um, so I can literally just use my existing profiles and I'll know how it feels compared to not having these because this is what I ran for however many years. I've also got four butt kickers um, downstairs waiting for me to do a four corner butt kicker setup to compare to this as well. So that will be a future video coming. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's get all this stuff installed. I don't know if I've yet mentioned the price of the kit, so I better drop that in here now. It's $499 plus shipping to wherever you may be in the world. Uh, and this is where obviously all the DIYers out there go, oh, I can do it for, for half that price or whatever. And again, you, you, you probably can. Um, although these, these tactile transducers are, are 50 quid each here in the UK, so it's 200 pounds just for the transducers. Uh, and then you've got the amplifier, the USB sound card, the isolators, the custom made brackets, you know, there's not a, you, you could save some, but I mean, who can make up their own custom made brackets? Not, not everybody. Again, this, this kit is for the non DIYer, you know, and it has to be a profit made as well. So I don't think 499 is a bad price at all, really. You know, I can't fabricate my own metal brackets to hold these isolators uh, and transducers attached to it. It's just not something I can do. Um, don't have the machine shop to do it don't have the skills. Well, I might be able to cut some metal bender, but you know what I'm saying. Again, this is a non-DIY option. So $499 plus shipping to wherever you may be in the world is what it costs. Now, the installation, as you will have just seen from my little sped up montage, um, all went smoothly, no issues whatsoever. Everything is literally plug and play from bolting the transducers to the rig to plugging in you know, the, the little amplifier, the USB sound card. The only thing you do need to do, which I did mention earlier in the video, is trim the wires. Oh, you can't actually see it, they're out shot. Trim the wires to length using a pair of cutters and strip the ends off. So that's the only thing you need to do from sort of a DIY point of view. Also, on top of the Allen keys that come provided, you do need a 19 mil spanner as well, just to nip up, the, there's a big bolt that goes through the top and holds everything together, just needs nipping up and two nuts as well. So 19 mil spanner is what you'll need. Open-ended or ring, either or will be fine. Uh, but yeah, all went smoothly, all bolted on, the holes are all drilled in the right places, everything was provided, no issues whatsoever. For me, the standard spring set up with the blue and the brown were fine. I weigh 90 kilos, we're on a GT Mega Prime Light with the 
uh, Invicta wheelbase, all quite heavy stuff. This chair's quite weighty as well, uh, and I'm fine, they don't bottom out at all. Um, in use, you don't feel any sort of motion, you, even, even with sort of, uh, you know, aggressive steering. I mean, I'll put a clip up of me trying it all out now. I didn't really feel any movement. There may have been some, I don't know. You know, sat here now, I can obviously, I can see it in the, in the camera, I can, and I can see it in front of me. I can make the rig wobble left to right and forwards and backwards, but you don't do this when you're, <laughs> excuse me, when you're in a race, do you? Um, perhaps if I tried dirt rally, which I can't do with this current steering wheel, um, maybe there would have been a little bit more you know, movement on those springs. So you don't really feel like you're floating. That isn't the point of them though, that was just more of a curiosity thing for me. What I did notice though, like instantly when using it, and even just using the, the test function in SimHub, which recognized everything all fine, you know, so you follow their instructions um, that I may already have shown you. Yeah, probably did, I think. Um, and they all, it all worked perfectly, everything, so that's fine. Um, yeah, even using the test function in there, I'm used to hearing things rattle around the room. And also, um, I have my girlfriend stand in the room and normally she'd feel it through her feet. As I'm going through the test, couldn't feel a thing. And the same when I was racing, again, there'll be a clip up at some point, either now or later, of me using it. Obviously, you can't feel what I can feel. The, the, the transducers perform just how they should do, and if you've done a DIY setup, you'll know what they're like, so the transducers work exactly as they should. But these isolators do work great. There was no vibration transmitted through into the floor, because I'm upstairs in a building here with you know wooden floorboards. Everything vibrates like mad normally. Um, when I run these sort of things at quite high volumes, there was nothing, nothing at all. So that was the biggest thing I noticed really was how silent the operation was compared to normal where things would be rattling around the room, the floor would be vibrating. And all that additional vibrations transferring out is lost energy as well. Not that I noticed like a huge increase in feedback through the rig, it might just be because there's plenty of overhead with these transducers anyway. But the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for me is how much quieter and isolated this setup now is versus having four tactile transducers without the isolators. Um, I didn't notice any frequencies that were lost. I didn't notice anything not feeling right, whether it's being absorbed by the springs maybe and not coming through the rig, but it was really the isolation from the room around me. No vibrations through the wooden floor, nothing in the room vibrating around me. So for people, you know, concerned about running tactile setups in a flat, an apartment, or in a room where there's other people that might be noise sensitive around you, these isolators definitely work way better than just having thick rubber feet, which is what I used before with my Rekhorn transducers. Um, so they're they're just great, and if it's what you need, they work they work brilliantly, keeping the rig off the floor perfect. Everything was so easy to install as well. The bottom half of the isolators, if you just lift the rig up, you can just pop them out and change the springs if you need to. If you happen to be, you know, heavy enough to compress it, or you'd have to be pretty weighty to do that, though I would say, um, because I'm not even close, you know. And like I say, I'm 90 kilos, which is 14 stone, 14 and a half stone, something like that. Um, I mean, there's a much bigger guys out there than me, of course. Um, but no, I think the whole kit as a whole, everything from installing the brackets, the transducers, the isolators, running the wires. I mean, the video I put up with it all installed, I've just got the wires laying on the floor and everything set up from a testing point of view. If this was to be a permanent install, um, obviously you would neatly run the wires, perhaps in the channels of your profile, cable time in place or whatever you might wanna do. What you see in my video clip of it all installed is it all just installed for testing purposes. That's why the sound card's dangling from a short USB cable and that's why there's wires everywhere. Oh, hello, Ori. My cat just uh, vocally made herself known. Oh, and she's brought up her favorite mouse, which is a Christmas mouse. You're not gonna see it because it's out of shot, but rest assured she's over there and she's just delivered me a Christmas themed fluffy mouse. Anyway, uh, yes, everything worked perfectly, everything installed easily, the instructions were clear and easy to follow. Uh, even the SIM hub setup and the Windows sound card setup, step by step, no issues whatsoever. So 
I can, you know, I can wholeheartedly recommend this kit if this is the type of tactile transducer setup you want. If you prefer something that sits in your seat, then I recommend the Sim Racing Studios U Shake 6 from those guys. It literally just sits behind you on your seat. And then for those of you that want to feel things like, because you'll have, they have tactile transducers that vibrate on your thighs and, you know, on your butt cheeks and your lower back and all that and the other. And some people may prefer that. For me, I prefer it to be originating from the four corners of the car and then whatever is lost in both amplitude and frequencies through the chassis, again, um, to me is a more realistic setup. It's how I prefer it. But this is each to their own. So you've got your options now. You can buy this sort of plug and play kit and all you need is a 19 mil spanner and some wire snippers or even a pair of scissors if you don't have any wire snips would do the job. Um, and it all just bolts on and the software works just great. Sim Hub is, you know, a, a favourite for all of us out there anyway. Um, or if you want the stick it in your seat option, then you've got Sim Racing Studio U Shake. Uh, but again, the real party trick with this is not only it's plug and play and simple installation and clear instructions, it's those four isolators that keep your rig off the floor and keep the vibrations contained to your rig rather than shaking the room around you. So a big thanks to Slip Angle for sending this over for testing and all you viewers for saying, yes, Carl, get it in. Yes, Carl, get it in. We wanna, we wanna know if it's any good. Well, the answer is it is good. It's as good as any four tactile transducer corner shaker setup should be. And then it's been added to with the isolators and with the plug and play nature of the whole kit, making it easy for the non-DIY sim racer to be able to get up and running without too much trouble. So there will be a link in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.